right. Welcome everybody to the teaching and learning call. Uh, this is January 15th and I'm Trisha Gordon at the University of Virginia facilitating the call. And we're having a Jira Palooza today. Um, before we dive into the Jiras, I wanted to invite anyone who might have announcements to share those with us. Um, I have an, an announcement about Sakai Camp. So that's coming up in about a week and a half in Orlando. And I know um, not everyone can join us here on site, but we are opening it up um, for virtual attendance during a couple time slots. So on Monday morning on the 27th, January 27th, um, from 9 till noon, we're going to have a Zoom meeting available that people can drop in virtually to kind of participate and, and listen in on the conversation. And then also Tuesday afternoon between 1 and 3 p.m., we're going to do the same thing. And um, I, I sent out a uh, message about that on the email list with the link to the Zoom connection info. I'll, I'll go paste that into our etherpad as well so you guys have the link there. But um, but there's also a message with all that info um, on the listserv. So if you're subscribed to those, you should have gotten it. Um, but I encourage you guys to pop in. We actually have a new meeting owl this year. It's an upgraded um, version and it should pick up better sound at a um, greater distance. So hopefully the okay. um, sound quality will be a little bit better for the remote awesome. attendees. So fingers great. crossed. Thank you. Yeah, that that's great. Uh, anyone else have any announcements? I know um, right after this call is the um, UX meeting. And at 11, I think, same room? It's in room three. Room three, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Okay, All so um, for those who are able, I hope you can attend. Oh, and we should have a 19.4 release soon. I don't have an exact date on that. But I know that the um, the core team was uh, hoping to cut the branch soon for that um, point release. Did you say nineteen point four? Yes. Okay. Awesome. I just pasted the Etherpad link again into the chat for folks who are joining late. So you can hop on over to Etherpad and sign in. And also that's where you'll find the list of JIRAs we're going to talk about today. And I think we're ready to go ahead and dive into those. So we'll start with the first one, which is, um, let me paste the link into the chat for folks um, so you can follow along. 42967. And uh, so I know Wilma um, added this to our agenda, and it has to do with allowing users to edit forum posts for 30 minutes after posting. Um, Wilma, do you want to kind of run through the Proposal sure. There. Yeah, this actually was a, a request that came from one of our clients. Um, and uh, they have activities that, that students do that are graded posts, but a lot of times students will post things and then after they post it, they see a typo or a small, you know, item that they want to correct, but they can't edit them because the, the default settings don't allow students to edit. So they wanted to have it to where it would um, allow them half an hour after posting to make any changes that they needed to make and then the post the post kind of becomes final or locked so that they can't edit it after that. Um, so it would primarily affect students because um, admins or instructors can go in and edit them whenever. Um, but, uh, but the idea was to give them that little window. And Moodle actually does a similar thing, um, where it's a system-wide setting a certain number of minutes. Um, after a post, the user can go in and make changes to the post. Um, so uh, I thought it was a good idea, but I wanted to run it by this group and see if you guys had any thoughts or any, um, you know, considerations we might want to build in. Um, I already thought of a few to do with, um, you know, if, if it's something where users subscribed to a forum, you don't want those notifications to go out until after that 30-minute um, 
window is elapsed. Um, if there's a cutoff date, you want to make sure that the cutoff date is observed so it doesn't allow editing after the end date for the topic. And if it's one of those um, require users to post before reading, that the other topics should not become available to the student until after that editing window is open or over. Um, so they can't like go in and edit and change their um, response after reading other people's. Um, but this would be a system setting. So any institution could set it for any amount of minutes they want. And if they want to keep the default behavior right now, they would just leave it at zero. Um, but you could change that if needed. So anybody have any thoughts? So um, I, I feel like this, this is Tiffany, I feel like this should be very low priority because you can allow instructors or allow students to edit their own posts. Uh, you can allow it at a system level as the default. Um, so, you know, at UVA, we allow students to edit and, um, <laughs> and delete their own posts, but not others. And I think that's, you know, since the feature already exists there, I'm not too pressed to to think this is very um, critical. Uh, I had the same thought, but Wilma had a a um, yeah. I, I understand. Yeah, well, I, it's more for graded um, posts, so that the um, institution didn't want students going in and changing their answers after a grade was assigned. Um, so they didn't want to just change the permissions blanket, and you know they could always edit um, because that wouldn't uh, fit their use case. In terms of priority, this is something that um, one of our clients is looking to fund. So it's not something that's uh, okay. necessarily, you know, we're trying to raise money for or anything like that. Um, but I just wanted to run it by the community to see if there were any, you know, things we hadn't thought of or any, um, you know, pushback this, on the feature. Would this tie in at all to the forums enhancement project or Actually, Matt had a, um, a comment uh, on the JIRA that he thought that this was a good idea, but that it might um, need a draft capability. And we had actually had a, a, a JIRA open, um, I think it's been open for a while, about yeah. having a draft option, which was actually part of the forum's work. So, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, we might actually get kind of a two for one <laughs> on I, this. I actually yeah. yeah, I actually but, posted the draft Jira long before the um, the forums group, but yes, it's it was tied into that afterwards. Yeah. Um, yeah, draft option um, sounds it sounds like this particular work would be slightly different in that there would be a time limit, and so that would be. It's kind of sounds like draft with a time limit. Right. Yeah. yeah like well, it's a time not really a draft. Auto, is, well, it would be auto-published. At least that's how Matt described it in his comment. Right. Yeah, I after, mean, after the time limit is up, it would auto-publish. Yeah. Right. I mean, and it sounds you, more like a moderated than a draft, right? Because moderation requires the instructor to approve it. In this case, it would be a 30 minute timer approving it um, because the student's already posted it. If it's not visible after it's already posted, then it's then it's moderated technically. Well, if it's a draft that the student can see. And well, and, but that's that's it. how the moderation works. OK. You know, it's it's not really a draft. It's actually posted, but the student, mm -hmm. only the student and the instructor can see that. But post. can the student edit the post? Yes. It yes. only if they have the edit per own permission, though. Correct. I believe so. So it's it, does, it does kind of beg the question about how do the permissions play into this? Mm hmm. Yeah, well, assuming default permissions, which is students are not allowed to edit, then um, you'd need to give them the editing permission for a set amount of time afterward. And even if they had the permission, it seems like if you're going to add a feature like this, even if students have the permission to edit their own, if you wanted some time limit, perhaps that option could show up anyway to the instructor for a particular 
um, forum or topic. Well, it yeah, sounds so like like this is something that's being set system wide. So, is that something that an instructor would still yeah. have the option to enable, or is that just something that's there? Well, I think the the question is whether the settings should have it as an option or whether it should just be enforced. Um, frankly, I think it would be better if it's an option because yeah. you know some instructors might want to let them edit until whatever the due date is that the instructor is set to lock the forum. And then other instructors may not want them to edit. You know, it just depends. I'm just yeah, making some notes in the uh, JIRA. I mean, it's it, these seem to be slid this and and having a draft mode seem to be slightly different things because I when I think of draft mode I think of <clears throat> oh, I'm working on my post but I don't have time to fish, finish it now I'd like to save it as a draft whereas mm -hmm. the edit after posting is okay I've I've posted it and now I'm looking at it and oh wait I see a little I see a typo I see something I want to fix I want to go back in and do that that that's a kind of a separate thing yeah I agree. I think I think the ability to edit is not quite the ability to save a draft. And I think the ability to edit for 30 minutes is much more like a moderated topic than um, than a, a draft post. The form of moderation. So, Wilma, I don't know, maybe. Um, hmm. Do these comments help you kind of figure out what you need to discuss to, to work on this or do you have questions? Um, yeah, I, I think so. We can take a closer look at how the moderation works and, and talk to our devs and see is that an easier route in, t in terms of making it work from a technical perspective. Um, You know, I think I, I don't know if the the client that had requested it wanted to do it system wide. So we were thinking system wide setting. I don't know if making it an individual option would be um, adding more complexity to it or not. So again, that'd be a developer question. So so some of the issues raised would need more input from our developers. So um, I don't know if Tricia, were you were taking notes, if you could add those notes on the um, Jira, that would be great. And then I can just point our developers there when they're writing up the estimate. Okay, so right, so far I have, it might be better to make this an option to an instructor on a per form or topic basis rather than a global all or nothing. Then I also have investigate how moderation works and what else did I miss? Did I miss any other specifics? I think that was it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, so I, guess, mm -hmm. I guess the other question is um, setting it at a system wide level. If it's a setting the instructors can modify, um, is it easy enough to set at the system wide level? I vaguely recall it being kind of difficult to get the system wide default set for forums, but that's just. Well, that, that's a developer question. question. Yeah. And, um, Wilma can take that to, to them. Okay, thanks everybody. I hope that was helpful, Wilma. Yep, thank you. So I have another JIRA. Let me paste the URL in. It's uh, 42971. And let me get that JIRA pasted into chat for you guys. And it looks like this has to do with grade book, ungrouped categories not displaying in the correct order for grade summary slash student view. And this was created by Andrea Schmidt. And I'm not sure who added it to our agenda. Looks like Sean put the last comment in. So what he says is, should the student's default view and order be the same as the instructor's? And then allow the students to sort or group as the student pleases. 
So those are the questions about this. Um, well, my thought is that the students view should not be the same as the instructors, because what if there are five instructors in the site and they each have a different view? <laughs> I assume he means default, Tiffany. No, but I mean the, the default view, if each instructor can set their own view of the grade book. And if but, the default view for the student is supposed to match the instructor's default view, which instructor is it going to match if there are multiple instructors or TAs in the site? Can multiple instructors do that? I thought that was just set by settings. And that's that particularly for category order, that's set by the order that they're ordered. <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> that, that, that they're listed in in the settings page, and that's for everybody. I don't. I didn't think you could say, "Oh, instructor A can see it this way, and instructor B sees it another way." Yeah, you can choose which which columns you're seeing, but not the order. Yeah, you can hide stuff, <laughs> but that's just hidden for that user. But the order, I think, is in the settings. No, the order of items is manually dragged and dropped by instructors. Uh, but doesn't that affect all instructors then? If if I no. change it, are you sure? As far as I recall, no. Um, it's just an individual view, and it goes away when you refresh the page. As I recall, I mean, I I could be wrong. Now maybe it's changed, but um, well, they changed. I think they they've changed what's that hidden things will stay hidden if right. you if you go out and go back right. in okay. so if if i'm just moving things around and it's temporary anyway then then the default order now order stays if i move something to a different order it stays but i think okay. that's for everybody well for students the for item items. order is no the item order is alphabetical it's always alphabetical by default and then the student can select a drop you know whatever um, like I think it's by grade or by um, alphabetical title or by comments. I think you can do alphabetical by comments. There's right. like four or five different um, headings they can click on to sort them, but that's it. Uh, they can't manually drag and drop around individual items within a category like an instructor can. Right. They don't have control like that. But but I think. In, in my experience, most instructors, if they put things in a particular order, you know, because they don't want them to be alphabetical, they maybe they want them to be chronological, um, that they want the students to see it the same way. That the yeah, student order should, no, they don't. No, if the instructor it, wants them to, I mean. Right. The instructor yeah. wants them to, but they don't. And that it's never been that way. Even in Gradebook Classic, when the instructor ordered items, you know, only the category order was being reflected for the student, as far as I recall. Right. Um, just FYI, I just tested it, and if one instructor moves the order of a column by drag and drop, and a different instructor logs in, it's in the order that was set by the original instructor. So it it does oh, really? preserve it preserves the order for different instructors if you reorder columns. Okay. Students I think that's don't currently change. get. I, I don't. I think it's always been that way, honestly, but. Um, really? I think so too. Items? Yep. Huh. Now, hiding columns, that's a different thing. Um, but the hmm. order of columns is hmm. maintained. But I, th I think stu instructors. student order should reflect the instructor order. Yeah. Because the instructor totally order agree. usually puts it in, changes that order for a particular reason, and it probably makes sense that the students see it that way as well. And there's yeah. no really no reason students would want to reorder their grade items anyway. So Right. Probably unnecessary. Yeah, for any reason. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that the the current option to sort by grade or um, by title could be very useful for students. You know, they may want to see their stuff in order of ascending or descending, you know, grade points, what they did better on or worse on in a category. Well, yeah, it should still they should still be able to sort it that yeah, way I don't think, I don't think if they want to, would, but I think the yeah. default order should be the instructor order. And that would probably be a temporary order that when they refresh their screen or go somewhere else, it would reset to the what the instructor had set yeah. up. Yep. So do we have an agreement in how it um, 
I how it currently works and how it needs to work. How it currently works for instructors has been recently influenced by <laughs> my over overarching need <laughs> to have everything that's copied from one semester or one course shell to another one match the original, which includes the grade book. For many people, the grade book isn't used to send grades to it from assignments or tests and quizzes, but to enter grades. And um, a course designer for many sections <coughs> would want the same grade item column order, the same order within categories, the same order of categories within the grade book, the same uh, schema, the same number of drop so many lowest or highest or whatever to have the grade book from that as configured in one site be able to be copied from site to site to site so those kind of considerations have uh, recently been entertained and fixed and worked on for both um, import from site and uh, duplicate site and exporting your grade book to a CSV file and importing it to the next, although not all of your settings, of course, are inside of a CSV export, but the order of things is. And uh, that was done from the instructor's point of view, but I did see and put in the uh, public chat here for Julie of Providence College that it looks like their um, their request in Sakai 33102 that the instructor sort order is what the students see that already has been completed as well. So it looks like right now we're talking about whether or not the students should be allowed to change that to whatever they want it to be. And I would think that oh, the I think answer they, should be no. Can, can can they do that already? Not as far as I know, but I'm no expert on the student. I am not either. So I don't know if it's been removed, but students should have the option in their grade book to click on the headings of the various columns, um, you know, the grade item column and um, the the um, the grade you know, point value column and stuff like that to resort the items in their gradebook. And I think this could be very useful uh, for a student who has, you know, a cognitive disability or who wants to see their grades in ascending order, you know, what I do worse on, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I think taking that away is not good. Yeah, currently you can sort within categories and students can collapse categories. They can't change the order of the categories, but they can expand and collapse the categories if they don't need to see it, like all of the things oh. all at once. Yeah. Um, items within a category can be sorted. Those are nice features. So, yeah, and the student can collapse all of them at once or expand all of them. Um, so yeah, they have the ability to sort by gradebook item, grade, weight, uh, percentage, due date, and comments. But those changes that they make do not persist from session to session. I no, I don't that, think so. Yeah. They can always automatically sort the items by alphabetical um, the default. But no, what they're what they're getting um, from SAK three three one zero two is what they're getting as their default is what the instructor has has set up. I don't know how this um, how this Jira handles when it, where there's multiple instructors. Well, multiple instructors would all get the same order yeah. of items. Um, quick question though, are 33102 and 42971 basically the same thing?
Julie, are you, I don't know who Julie's responding to there, if that's. Oh, you know what, Tricia, it looks like the 42971 is an issue that Andrea found while working on the other one. Okay. And they are linked, I believe. So um, what I commented in 42971, and if I didn't get it right, let me know, is uh, from, from our comments today, student order should reflect instructors adjusted order if changes are made as it does for other instructors in the same site. Is that basically? Well, I think the question that Sean has here is whether the checkbox to group as group by category should be enforced to obey the instructor's checking or unchecking of that box on the student side. So if the instructor unchecks group by category, should students have a default view that is ungrouped by category if categories exist? And I think the answer is no. I think the answer is no. The student, if if things are grouped by category, the student should see them within their category by default. And if they want to turn them off, then they can get the ungrouped by category option. So that that's Tiffany's thoughts. Um, I think I agree with that. I do too. Tiffany, would you? Be kind enough to capture that in 42971 and just um, I don't know if you can edit my comments. I'm just going to remove my comment and no, don't remove it. I'll just add one. Okay. Thanks. All right. I keep getting some background noise from somebody. Not sure who that is, but um, the next JIRA is 429-05. Let me paste this into the chat for everybody. 429-05, and that has to do with Gradebook also about adding a summary comment option to accompany the final course grade. And this was proposed by Alan Reagan. And in our etherpad, he has written, since he couldn't be here today, he has written up a little bit more about his appeal. Um, as an instructor, he says, I would like the option to provide a student top level final feedback, even just to say, Mary, thank you for your participation and hard work in class. It's been an honor, blah, blah, blah. It would be optional and content would only display to the student if a comment had been entered and no placeholder if not. Ideally, this feedback would display within the course grade box just below the grade. Uh, an instructor would enter the comment by selecting the drop down menu for, from the course grade column and a new add edit comment option would be available. To add a comment. And the comment entry process would function just like the comment feature for any other gradebook item. So, any reactions or thoughts? Uh, I personally think that's a great idea. I was unaware because I don't teach myself that we didn't have that as an option, and I'm kind of surprised to be honest. Okay, great. Sounds like um, at least from a couple of chats I see and um, in your comment, Heather, that folks are happy with this suggestion. So um, I'll, I'll comment in the JIRA to that effect. Great, well, that was easy. Uh, let me just update the tags in the JIRA. 
Great. Thanks, everybody. Uh, let's see. And then we have one more JIRA, 42823. Let me paste that in. There we go. And I don't have this one open yet, so I don't know what it's about. About increasing gradebook polling on is other user editing. Oh, interesting. So Andrea Schmidt discovered this in some testing, apparently. Um, testing is two different instructors in the same site attempt to modify the same cell. Expected result is a warning that another user is already editing. Um, Currently, that is other user editing only polls every 10 seconds. And let's see, Andrea's last comment, she just retested on 20X, and I would say another option is needed if the users receive sufficient warning in my opinion they do not yeah I, I think 20 seconds is definitely too long um, for a warning because if two of us are trying to enter the grade in the same box it takes a lot less than 20 seconds to type in a grade in a box right I mean, I think we'd want that that polling to be as often as possible without breaking the system as far as performance goes. And then one of Sam's comments was, if two users are editing at the same time without knowing, will they receive a sufficient warning? So I guess this little parameter for is other user editing will present a warning yeah it does it gives you a little like um i think it's like a pencil icon or something and that says at the top of the screen i don't know how accessible it is it says at the top of the screen that another instructor is editing you have to refresh your view to enter your grade in that same cell or something gotcha and andrea has posted a couple of videos of the behavior um in this JIRA. I mean, if the 10 second polling is what we have in Sakai 11, it's pretty decent as far as warning instructors, I think. Um, but I think 20 seconds would definitely be too long. Okay. I've made that comment. Any other thoughts around this, folks? Okay, that's that's what I will add. Thank you guys for your feedback. I know this helps the developers figure out what what the behaviors should be and what what makes the most sense. So this is really helpful. Um, so that is the last Jiro I have on our list for today. So we're going to end really early. Um, does anybody have any other um, announcements or? Do, Tricia, yes. do we want to look and see if there are any other issues out there with the TNL tag on them? I suppose we could do that. Um, I actually have an announcement uh, for the accessibility working group. Um, there will be a special uh, presentation next week, uh, the 24th, uh, from Census Access, which is um, an LTI um, tool that can be used to um, automatically generate alternative format documents uh, for students with, um, with those needs. It uh, plugs into resources and um, obeys the resources restrictions on access. And so a student can go into a course site and select a file 
uh, that they need another format of and download that um, alternative format um, from that file uh, for like PDFs, for example, or Word docs. Um, and uh, that meeting will have its own meeting link that I um, will put in the accessibility working group uh, page and also in the emails that I send out for that. Will you post the um, working group page link to the Etherpad? Sure. Thank you. And along with your announcement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I am looking on, let me paste this into the chat. I'm looking at some JIRAs. Oh, looks like Julie, you pasted something. Roster print version doesn't work well. Okay, 42178. Let's go on over there. Roster print version does not work well. Julie, do you want to describe this? I'm not sure if you have a mic or if you don't, I'm happy to. Okay, um, so possibly introduced and in refactoring. Um, so choose at least 10 members into a site with roster tool, choose the print option, ensure the print views are properly for, formatted properly, include all students and don't cut off any of the students. That's the desired effect. And apparently it does do some cutting off. And this has been tested across a couple of few browsers. Uh, so there's a few comments. It seems like this might be tied to browser page setup settings. Um, in some cases, Sean Platt had replied to Jennifer Laudiana that if you customize the scale when you're going to print, you can adjust it so it doesn't cut off right. Um, Sam Ottenha, and we discussed this on in October. And Sam suggested wait for browsers to fix themselves, print to PDF, revert Brian Jones CSS changes. Um, and we expressed support for option B at the time. So Julie, let me hop back over to see if you have any comments to that. Let's see you're typing. Yeah, so option B, I believe, was going to require 24 hours of development. And um, <clears throat> and so I don't know if this is on Sam's list, but he is listed as the reporter. And I don't, it, it's just still open. It's not in progress or anything like that. So I think it is on a list. Okay. Yeah, sure, no problem. So if folks wanna hop over to the Confluence uh, link I pasted uh, just a little bit above in the chat and scroll down on that page, you'll see a whole list of TNL um, tag JIRAs. And uh, let's pick and choose which ones, um, you know, just tell me which ones you wanna talk about. There's some that are awaiting review. There are some that are open, some that need information. So those might be the ones to look at. So 
So I will just pick one then. Um, I'm going to start at the top. Sec 42962. Let me copy that into the chat. And this has to do with Google Calendar integration with the sign up tool. So this is from John Buckingham at um, Pepperdine. They use Google heavily. You can imagine there are several others that do, and they have an idea. They currently offer one-on-one -on -one meetings to students using the sign-up tool, and students can access the tool and sign up. The idea here is that if a student signs up for a session, then both the instructor and student would automatically receive a calendar invite by email. So I think that's the proposal. And let's scroll down. So Sean says, what if a student signs up for a time slot, sign up could send an email notification with the calendar invite that would add the event to their preferred calendar, then it isn't specific to Google implementations. I would say that would be desirable. That makes sense. So so I, I think I talked to John about this when he was creating this JIRA. Um, and SignUp does send a, um, an email automatically the day before an event. But um, I guess that maybe this could be a checkbox for the instructor to allow it to send um, an email like right on SignUp. Or it could just automatically send an email right on sign up with this. I don't know if the current email that goes out includes the iCal file. It already generates the iCal file. Um, the sign up tool already generates the file. So it really is calendar it. agnostic already. What? It's it's agnostic to whatever calendar one uses already. Well, yeah, you can download an iCal file, which can be opened in in various, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. So um, it's mentioned also in the description um, that, you know, the, the file is available, um, but you have to manually add that file to your calendar after you've um, gone okay. to the event and signed up. Okay but it is included in the notification. No, I don't know if it's included in the email notification. It's included in the sign up tool when you visit that event. So there's an iCal file oh, in the tool. There's also a separate email notification that can go out to users uh, one day before the event they're signed up for. So it sends them an email reminder but I'm not aware of it actually sending, you know, whether it sends the iCal file as an attachment to that day before notification. I doubt it does. Mm. Okay. I, just, I know it, it does those two things separately, but if it could possibly be combined into another email so that you have, you know, the email that goes out on sign up that includes the iCal file and then you still have the one that goes out the day before. Now users, uh, the instructor or, or um, site administrator can turn off the option to uh, send out a reminder email if they want to turn that off, but it seems useful and it's on by default, I think. Okay, thank you, Tiffany. As usual, you you know these tools so much more deeply than most of the rest of us. <laughs> okay, I added a comment that it makes sense to uh, include the calendar iCal in an email notification. I think that's what we're agreeing to, is that right? Yeah, I, I like the idea of having it as an email notification and then they can put it whatever calendar they want. Okay, thanks. Agreed. We have maybe time for one more. So let me get back over to that list. I'd be interested in uh, looking at the PA system banner question. Okay. Um, 
That's uh, SEC 42916. Okay. Oh, the one right underneath it. Okay. Yeah, the next one. Copy that link and paste it in for folks in case. PA system banners are, oh yeah, not accessible with a screen yeah. reader. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, Jen's team at ISU um, did some looking at this uh, in the nightlies as well. Um, the question is, um, what should happen with the high priority alerts versus other types of alerts? Because the problem is that it reads the, um, it looks like it reads the banner alert the first time you access the page, but you can't get to the close link um, with the screen reader very easily uh, to close out that um, PA alert. And then the question is, if you navigate to another page, do you want to hear it again? Like, what's the the frequency of announcement we want? Um, you know, depending on uh, the type of alert, it may be disturbing uh, and disruptive for the user to hear it every time they navigate to a new page. I can imagine if I'm taking a quiz and I hear every page that, you know, the system will be having a downtime two days from now, <laughs> that would be very frustrating. Um, right. So especially what, if you can't stop it once it starts talking, reading it. So is there a proposal? Well, so the question is, what what would people think would be the best uh, way for this to function? Because I think that's, we're not sure. Um, so one of the suggestions was, if it's at all possible to make it live, uh, make the PA banners uh, live somewhere um, in the overview page of a site. But then the problem with that is that if you have a high priority alert, you might want it to appear right away and be obnoxiously loud. Like there's a problem right now, log off and save your work, you know, save your work and log off. Um, so the, the issue is what the, the, the PA system doesn't allow you to specify very much what you want your alert to be doing to mm -hmm. the users. Um, you basically just have a priority level and then it appears and either allows the user to close it or not, as the case may be. Um, but, um, you know, how then often... Then it, then it pops up again when you yeah, navigate. Yeah, if you, if you have one that's high, that's priority, high priority, it, yeah. it pops up again, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> There's like a medium priority that lets the user close it um, until they log in again or something. And then there's a low priority where they can just close it out and it goes away. Well, my, at least in the way we use it here at UVA, we do not post high priorities until a downtime is imminent. We don't right. do it two days right. in advance. So right. I, I think getting the annoying reminder minutes before the system goes down to save your work and get out is probably a good thing. Yeah, I agree. Um, but that's how we use it, and I don't know yeah. about others. Yeah. Anybody else have experience with this that you would like to weigh in? We've used it sometimes um, when we've got a... Um, an outage coming up um, so that, um, you know, and it might be, so that might go out several days before. Um, but that's, I think those are probably sent out as mediums where the user can close it out right. um, and not see it pop up on every single page. Um, but we don't use it, we don't use it real often, so. Yeah, nor do we. Really, it's it's rare that we use um, the high priority. We very rarely have downtime. So, yeah, I think I think we may have had to do that once since it's been available. So, Tiffany, I don't know if we've answered your question or not. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'll take it back to the accessibility working group and see um, what folks say there. I think part of the problem is we don't know what's technically possible to do with them as far as, um, you know, how they could be restricted or limited if they're lower priority ones uh, so that they don't become too annoying. Yeah. Okay, I'm just all right, I'm adding a comment that the TNL um, are not sure what to recommend. <laughs> just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. Sorry, I'm bringing one that I just don't know the answer to. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, it helps to have to try to sort it out anyway. Okay, I think we probably exhausted our time pretty well, and we actually got through quite a few jurors. So thanks, everybody. I want to um, remind you that we do have um, our next session is on February fifth, which is the week after Sakai Camp. So I'm anticipating that we might want to use that as a recap of some of the stuff that comes up in Sakai Camp, um, and you know, hopefully some of the Sakai camp attendees will attend and um, present. And I, you know, I'm not going to put the onus on anybody right now, but I um, would love to have volunteers for that. Um, I think many of us who aren't going to be able to go would be very interested to to get a recap and, and um, have some conversation around that. February 19th and March 4th are future dates, and we do not have any um, sessions to um, present. So I am actively encouraging folks to let me know if you have things you want to talk about um, so that we can get them on the agenda. We can keep doing Jaripaloozas because I know there are lots of them out there. That's always something we can do. But um, if there are things to present or talk about or updates on projects, um, would love to hear them. So please let me know. All right, so Charles said you might be persuaded to participate in a recap of Sakai Camp. Is that what you mean, Charles? Okay, great, well, thank you. And I'm sure others will too. So thank you, everybody. I'm gonna let you go a little early and don't forget the UX group is meeting right after this. Um, so if you can, please attend. And I look forward to talking to you guys on the 5th. Thank you.